It's another Friday and your weekend is incomplete without PM personality profile. My guest tonight, a hard-working mining engineer, is currently the executive vice president and head of Goldfields West Africa, vice president of the Ghana Chamber of Mines, Alfred Baku. He was recently named Mining Personality of the Year 2018 at the Ghana Mining Industry Awards and CEO of the Year at the Ghana Business Awards this year. Good to see you, Mr. Baku. Good to see you too. How Aisha. have you been and what have you been up to in the midst of COVID-19? I would say that COVID has come to hit the entire world, uh, but uh, luckily for gold, I think uh, the COVID, because of the uncertainty, has actually helped the gold price. Mm. And the gold price is doing so well. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> so some misfortune on, 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 has turned into blessing we for are you. mourning because of uh, COVID, uh, losing uh, lives. But on our side, uh, we are actually smiling. You're making a lot of money. the gold price <laughs> is doing well. <laughs> but you have an amazing story of how you actually your fast rising in the mining industry to become senior uh, my uh, senior mining engineer operations manager general manager finally to your uh, position as executive vice president head of gold fields west africa we'll delve into all of that but which part of the country do you come from thank you very much uh, i come from the volta region okay um but i was born and bred in uh, the Ashanti region, Kumasi, okay. uh, in, uh, at Ahinsan. That's where I was uh, actually brought up. Okay. Uh, so I would say so that... So both uh, parents are from Volta region? Volta region. Mm. Oh, uh, okay, to be and, precise. Yeah, to be precise. Okay, yeah. and you grew up in Ahinsan? I grew up at Ahinsan. So you speak very good Chi? Very, very good Chi, yeah. Okay, but... And uh, I didn't go to the fancy international schools. <laughs> I went to the LA primary okay. at our time. W yes. Which school is that? Ahinsan LA primary. Okay. I started right from uh, class one mm -hmm. through to form four. Okay, at our time. in Ahinsan. At Ahinsan, mm. yeah. from, from class one all the way through to uh, form four. Uh, interestingly for me, I was quite uh, fortunate. Uh, our time we did uh, what we call the uh, Form four exam, mm. and uh, when the results came, they said uh, it was uh, only one distinction, mm -hmm. and a lot of names came up. And at the time, I was playing ball, so I didn't go there. So some of the favorites went, and uh, they didn't get the distinction, and I went. And luckily, you I were the, the one who had the distinction. The distinction. My so goodness, I was quite uh, happy. So from there, Intelligent I had to boy. continue okay. uh, <laughs> my secondary education. So I didn't go to the fancy international schools. My father had this belief that it's not all about the school, it's about you, the student. Yeah, yeah. and you really proved him right. Yes. Great, yes. so f uh, from the distinction, you were able to go yeah. to... Yeah, so from uh, the distinction, uh, the distinction didn't land me in the secondary school. I had to... But why? Uh, I, I had to set uh, for... What we call the common entrance yes. exam. Okay. At so that I did time. the common entrance exam and then I passed. Uh, I selected uh, Amas. Okay. And then also Kumasi High. The famous. Uh, the famous Amas. Amas. Yeah, okay. Amadia. Okay. And then uh, I got uh, my first choice, which, which is, is uh, Amas. Amadia. Amadia. Okay, it means that you, 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 you practiced some Islamic stuff there because I'm told once you're a student there, you yes. will go through all of that training. Yes, your first, your first uh, three years is compulsory. You, you, you have, have to learn Islamic the Islamic studies. religion. Okay. Whether you are a Christian or not, mm. or a Muslim, okay. you have to learn it. Mm. So I went through that. Okay. So, so now I can do the ablution. Okay. I can pick my uh, bottle and then go and perform the ablution. The ablution. So you can say Fatia? Yeah? Yes. Um, I can say a little bit. A little bit. Yes. Uh, do you want to do that for me? That, 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 that is going to be a tricky one. I don't, I don't want uh, my Muslim uh, friends uh, to say I, I that. I can I'll, assist you, but I'll I'm here. I'll turn it around. I'm here with you. I can assist you. <laughs> um, one I can, I can share with you is uh, we were writing from the right to the, to left. the left. Yes. 
that Absolutely. is something that I still uh, remember. Mm. Um, and then in terms of the prayers, uh, I think I've forgotten uh, most of them. Iya kana budu, iya kana stadi. Edina. Edina Mustaki. Edina Strato Mustaki. <laughs> Let's end it here. <laughs> <laughs> this is an ever boy. That is a long time ago. An ever boy who grew up in Kumasi yeah. and then to Amas, Amas, a Muslim school. Yes. Oh my goodness. I, I but, actually came close to converting from uh, being a Christian to Muslim because. Uh, <laughs> I was enjoying the uh, I know, right? The ablution. You should have uh, stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I had to actually uh, call it off uh, with my football career and then concentrated uh, on my education. So we went in there. You don't know anybody. So you go in there as a, a young uh, boy uh, who has come to uh, get your secondary education. You met a lot of them. And uh, yeah, so we started and some uh, brilliant uh, uh, students uh, in a class and they came from where they came from and they were always uh, first in their class and I was also first in my yeah, class. And all of so you came best like of the best. Yeah, so, <laughs> so when we started the first, I think the first term, uh, I came second. Okay. In fact, uh, I wept. Oh because uh, the guy who came first uh, beat me with just one point. Oh, one mark. That so I went. So I said, no way. So from there, I had to actually put in a bit because I felt that the soccer was actually taking too much a lot of, of my your, attention. Yeah. So my father advised me, so bank the soccer because it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> so I had to just call it off. And that's I'm it. I'm sure it will, if so it was on, today, on, 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 yeah. your father would have urged you to, yeah, I mean, to do the today, football where because so it's much money kind of quite soccer, yeah, creative. Yeah, okay, but, so. yeah, so the secondary year, that was how uh, it all went. So I was um, more into science. You did pure science. I did pure science. But during the selection, uh, the business teacher said, no, you can also do business. And I said, no, I want to do uh, science. So I did pure science. Well, you were very good in maths, I'm sure. Very, very, very good in maths. That's Actually, maths was my best, my best subject. That explains why you're excelling in the mining industry. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, maths was my best subject, yeah. So uh, I selected uh, science, pure science. So at my sixth form, I did uh, math, uh, chemistry, and then uh, physics. Mm. Uh, yeah, so... I wanted to uh, be, always wanted to become an, an engineer, okay. uh, but I didn't think of becoming a mining engineer. Okay. I wanted to be uh, an electrical engineer or a civil engineer. Engineer. So um, I passed my uh, exam. I selected uh, KN uh, USC. USC. So I had in mind of going for my uh, engineering. So I went with my dad to uh, campus. So when we went, my dad uh, met uh, a friend, an old friend, and they said, what brought you here? Mm. He said, oh, my young boy uh, has passed and uh, we are coming to pick a form. Okay. And then uh, he was uh, actually the, um, the head of Agric, okay? And then he asked my father, what does uh, he want to do? And my father said, oh, he wants to do electrical engineering. Mm. So why electrical engineering? So that has always been his, his passion, passion. And that's what he wants to do. And then he said, oh, if he wants to come into engineering, mm. then he will advise that uh, actually pursue uh, mining okay. uh, engineering. Why? Because mining has got a lot of uh, uh, job opportunity compared to electrical engineering and the, the civil time. engineering that you and therefore so. I should uh, actually go for the mining I so I still love my electrical engineering <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll pick two forms okay uh, I'll pick actually three forms okay I'll pick the electrical I'll pick the civil and then, and then the mining which is and your then last I'll see option. how it will go <laughs> <laughs> so I'll put in the three forms and uh, Guess what happened? The faculty of mining invited me for an interview. Mm. And it was Takwa here. Okay. 
although they were linked to uh, tech, KNUST. but we had to come for the interview at, at Tampa. Tampa. Okay. And I didn't know anybody at Tampa, In Tampa. <laughs> because all my life has been Kumasi, Ashanti mm. region. Okay. So uh, I had to take train. So all I the way take from... train from Kumasi, and then uh, your last stop is Takwa. <laughs> so when you get to Takwa, you get out. <laughs> so I took the train. It was uh, actually midnight. Okay. So we got to Takwa very early, in like 4 a.m. Mm. But uh, uh, a church member said, when you get to I attend Church of Christ. So a church member said, when you get to Takwa, ask for Church of Christ. And maybe they will take you to their, Wherever. their oh. preacher, and then you can at least go and uh, freshen up and go for Before your interview. You go for the interview. So okay. when I got there, I asked for Church of Christ. And someone said, oh, you have to, it's a long walk. Okay. Because uh, at that time, uh, I didn't have money to go and take taxi or to <laughs> charter taxi. We didn't have Uber. <laughs> so I had to do a long walk. walk uh, looking to go for and Church see, of Christ. Looking for a Church of Christ member. So finally, I got someone. And then he said, yeah, I'm also a Church of Christ member. And you wanted to be sure that if I'm actually a Church of Christ were. member. And so I gave him uh, my background, how I got into the church, and okay. some of the things I've been doing. So it's okay, come in. So I freshened up, 7 a.m., I went for the interview. So when we went for the interview, uh, we had about 75 boys. Candidates. No, no female. Wow. 75. And they wanted uh, only 12. Out, out of, of the, the 75. 75. My wow. goodness. So they came, they call you, then you go, they call you, then you go. When you can, you don't have to talk to your people. Right? <laughs> They are going to get a pop. Yes. <laughs> so I think I was somewhere in the middle the 20th or 25th or something. Then I went, also went in, did the interview. The interview went very, very well. Mm. So I also finished. I don't have to come and tell Talk them to what, anybody what I and went then you through. Just I went. also went. And then, uh, so what I said to my father is, I filled three forms. Whoever will come first, first. knocking on my door, I'll go for that I'll one. I'll go for that one. So mining called me first, went for the interview, quite competitive, 75. They want only 12 of us. And you were part of the 12 people? And I was part of the 12. My goodness. So, so when they called me, you've been successful, so proceed with blah, 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 blah. So I said to my father, mm, the mining seemed to it's take, It's catching take, on. Take, uh, <laughs> The lead here. So that's how I got into mining. Oh. So you you were you on K on KNUST campus or you had to come to They moved everything from Kumasi to, to Takwa. Okay. So I had to move everything from Kumasi to Takwa. To Takwa. Okay. I said goodbye to, to KNUST and Kumasi. And then Kumasi, my parents, my siblings, and then I came to Takwa. So when we came to look, the course wasn't an easy course. I can imagine. You had to really work hard. And uh, we did a lot of uh, maths, a lot of uh, um, engineering stuff. And uh, maths was always my favorite. Ma maths has always been my best. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we went through. And you know what? Um, we went in actually 12, but one didn't turn up. Okay. So we ended up 11, 11. boys in the classroom. No female. So, uh, no female. So when we went, uh, they said we have to pick one to be the class captain. And guess who? They picked me uh, <laughs> because of my leadership presence. <laughs> so I was uh, the class imagine? captain. Yeah, from class uh, year one, I was the class captain. Somebody we didn't even want to do mining. We didn't want to do mining. Ended up heading yeah, yeah. the mining class. I tell you, and it was quite uh, interesting. So third year, uh, they had to also select uh, the president for the uh, school uh, reps. Okay. Uh, they call it uh, SRC, uh, yeah. School Representative Council. Council. So my class uh, mates were urging me, oh, go for the presidency, go for it. <laughs> they had some trust it. in you. I said, no, you know, uh, I don't have politics in me and therefore I don't want to go for it. They said, no, go for it. So I, they say, they say that the people's voice 
is always the voice of God. Yeah. So I also put up my hand <laughs> and I had to do campaign. Uh -huh. So I wrote my manifesto. I gave it to some of your uh, colleagues, media friends to actually uh, edit dates. it for me. They said, oh, it wasn't too bad. So, go. so I had to go and read my manifesto. And then I got uh, uh, elected as the president of uh, the school. I said, wow. Wow. So my final year, I had to be the president. I also, also had to finish uh, my uh, degree. Okay. So it wasn't easy. Our year was the year that uh, they wanted us to actually sign a, a bond for our loan. Okay. So um, as president, I had to do something. Mm. So I said, no, we are not going to sign this bond. Mm -hmm. We are not going to sign this bond. So they brought the forms. And then I called the whole school. And then I said, look, guys, we are not going to sign. It is all males, eh? No female. <laughs> We're not going to sign this At bond. that time, you've... So all of you bring me your form. You've learned to be a little <laughs> radical. <laughs> yes, radical. <laughs> I said, all of you bring me the form. Because as so SRC they all president... Me, they all brought their forms to uh -huh. me. Not only my classmates. All the school, they brought my form. Then I held the form in my room. And being the president, I, was, I had my room to myself. But others were actually pairing or sharing. Okay. So that was one of the privileges that I got mm. to have my room uh, to myself. So I got all the forms in my room. And then I said, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to go to Accra and meet the Minister for Education and tell the Minister we are not going to sign uh, the bond, bond because we don't want to be bonded. <laughs> so that when we finish school, we have to work for so many years before we can go and work for ourselves. So <laughs> we don't want to. So I went to Accra with uh, my executives and then we met the, uh, the uh, minister at the time. So we gave our presentation why we don't want to, that we were quite prepared to do the national, the normal national service. One year we'll serve and then after that. So um, the minister wasn't too uh, impressed with our story. Well, you managed so, to convince um, So when I came, uh, I said to them that we are going to burn the forms. Okay. So I mobilized them and we burned <laughs> the forms. <laughs> the, uh, the VC at the time called me to his office. So this took some time and I was not attending lectures. Ooh, can you imagine? Yeah. And uh, so I was missing a lot of lectures. Okay. So the VC Why? called me because you have to, to do all the... Uh, the, the administrative side of the burning of the form, the bond that they wanted us okay, to bond Okay, and going to Accra So and all going to that. Accra, meeting the VC, meeting... So I, I couldn't do uh, lectures. Okay. So I was missing a lot of lectures. And uh, we went through and I said to them, that's our position. I've burned the forms anyway. So, <laughs> so you are not going to get any more forms. It's so uh, easy to, to be so a leader. It. But, but so I, it was tough. But uh, yeah, we, we managed to get through it. And yeah. of course, you learn to be a little political and radical, yeah, radical <laughs> by being well, yeah. the SRC president. That was wonderful. But yeah. at the university or in Takwa, what would you say was your most challenging moment? Very good question. I would say my most challenging moment um, was when I had to actually combine uh, being the president of the school with lectures because it was actually time consuming and that is why in the first place I didn't want to but the people's voice is the voice of God so I, I ended up being the president so um, that was quite uh, challenging for me because you miss lectures and then you have to get the notes from your friends uh, and then you have to take the notes and then you have to go through to try and catch up. It was quite mm. challenging. Did it affect your, your studies or your grades? Yeah, it did affect it me did. because uh, you spent so much time and yeah. But in the end, we came out uh, with flying colors okay. and that I'm quite grateful. You actually yeah. did excel. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah. So after university, then what? Very good. So um, after university, what happened was um, our year was the year the university wanted us to actually start the MSc program. Okay. So the master's program, uh, we were fortunate uh, and we were the pioneers. So they approached me and something interesting happened. Um, I did my uh, thesis work at Belletin Bogoso. Okay. 
And when I uh, went to Billiton, uh, I was able to impress the uh, mining manager at the time. Okay. So he uh, actually had me in mind uh, to offer me a job after my first degree. So after my first degree, I had to uh, give them a copy of my thesis work. And when I went to actually hand my copy to the head of the department, he broke the good news to me that we have a position for you. Wow. We have a position for you as a graduate engineer. Hmm. And the university also wants to start us as the pioneers with the MSc program. Yeah. So I was torn between whether to uh, go for the job and don't do the MSc program or do the MSc program. Okay. So I was actually confused. So I had a lot of people telling me, what are you here for? You are here to get your degree and go and get a job. You've got your first degree. You've got a job. Don't worry about the second degree because when you even go to the industry, you can always come back and do the MSc. Mm -hmm. So I was actually confused. <laughs> so I went to my father and I said, this is what it is. And my dad, being an educationist, advised me to go for the MSc okay. and don't go for the job. The job, okay. So it was quite a, a tricky one for me. So I said, okay, I will listen to my dad. So I decided to go for the MSc. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back to the head of the department to tell him that, thank you very much for, for the offer. But the unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to take Aww. it. So he was uh, quite sad and uh, I couldn't uh, accept the offer. So um, I went to do the MSc. So the MSc is a, is a two year course and uh, you do the first year in classroom and then the second year you have to go for your thesis. So the second year, uh, when we finished the first year, I went to him. I saw, uh, Dave, I, I've come back, I want to do my thesis with you. And then he saw, you know what? The job I had for you, I haven't given it away. Wow. It's still available. Wow. Are you interested? Okay. So, wow. So I had to combine that with my thesis work. Okay. And that's how I started the industry. You see how destiny brought you yes. to Tacon. Was the gold fields your first job after university? I think a lot of people uh, see me as in all my career I've worked for only gold fields. My first job was billeting. Okay. I started working with Billiton. Also a mining? Also mining company. Okay. Billiton is, was one of the top, top uh, mining companies at, the, at our time. Okay, where? Uh, where, where is at that? At Bogoso. Okay. So that is where I started my mining career. Okay. So I was fortunate to actually combine my uh, job with my thesis, which is uh, the thesis work for the MMSC. Okay. So I started with Billiton. And after Billiton, I work for an Australian company called Ranger Minerals. Mm. So Goldfields is actually my third, your third company. Your third yeah. company. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Yes. Alfred Baku, my guest for PM Personality Profile. He is the Executive Vice President and Head of the Goldfields West Africa, Vice President of the Chamber of Mines. Remember, before he got to this position, he had held several positions. All of that, when we return from the break, he will be sharing his experiences. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest, Alfred Baco, he is the Executive Vice President and Head of Goldfields West Africa. And uh, I've been learning a lot in the mining side. The last time I went into a mining site was um, 2005 till date is how many years? 15 years? Yeah. And I'm back here at the Daman Gold Mines, right? Alfred Baco will be telling me more about his career and also share some experiences at the mining site. But I see since we came here that you take um, your safety precautions very seriously. Uh, we're taking through some induction. Induction. We're 
I mean, they explained to us what to do. They gave us emergency numbers. I mean, I just see that you are very careful about what you do here. How so much important is safety at the mining site? Thank you very much, uh, Aisha. And thanks for coming around as well. Um, we are pleased to have you at Daman uh, Gold Mine. Pleased to have you too. Uh, Daman Gold Mine is one of our mines uh, uh, within the region. Uh, and um, safety, we take it so seriously uh, because mining as a business is a high risk job. It's a high risk in a sense that you are dealing with heavy equipment. Some of the equipment are quite heavy, if I say they are heavy, and you can see in a pit there. And because the risk is so high, and we have uh, people working with equipment, uh, that is uh, why we take safety so seriously. And safety is our number one value. And we say that if we cannot mine it safely, we will not mine. Why do we mean, or what do we mean by that? Because Aisha, if today I come to work and I lose my life, I don't think the amount of gold that we have down there can replace my uh, life. And that is why we take safety so seriously. seriously. Well, let's talk about your career as a mining engineer. You started as a mining engineer, fast forward to senior mining engineer, and then operations manager, general manager to your uh, position. No, made a stop in Australia. Share with me, how was the experience? I started with Belletin, and that's how my career started. And interestingly, when I came to the industry as a mining engineer, mm. then my boss told me that I'm going to move you away uh, from the mining engineering to one of the things we have as part of the business called the surveying. Uh, it's a bit different from the mining, the real core mining engineering. Mm. So I was down a bit, but okay. uh, I gained a lot by doing that. So from there, I, I did three and a half uh, as a, a graduate engineer and then moved the ranks, moved up, and then I got this job. Mm. But guess what happened to me? I was actually thinking of going to do my MBA. Okay. Because the life of the mine at the time wasn't that good, and therefore I said, oh, let me go and do my MBA. And then uh, I got this job. Mm. And the way I got this job, uh, this is the uh, Ranger Minerals, mm -hmm. was so interesting. Mm. I was going for my dinner, mm -hmm. and then I met a friend. Okay. Uh, and they all know that I was actually thinking of leaving the industry the mining to industry. go and do my MBA. MBA. Okay. And then he said, haven't you seen that uh, there is a, a job uh, with Daman Mine? Okay. And I said, is that so? I haven't seen it. So he went and brought the newspaper. Uh, and then I saw the advert. So I also applied. And then uh, when I applied, I came for interview and then I was successful. So that is how I got into the Ranger Mineral. So I moved from Billiton to Ranger Minerals. Mm -hmm. I did three and a half years as well with Ranger. Okay. And then GoFoods came to take it over from Ranger Minerals. Okay. And that is uh, where I say again I'm lucky because GoFoods laid off all the workers at the time and then I was one of the ones or they the few retained. ones they retained. <laughs> and I retained, I was retained as a mining manager and then here I am. You have an amazing story. And so you rose through the ranks very fast. And you always say you were lucky. But in Australia, was the experience different from that of Ghana? Very good. You see, the, the reason why they uh, sent me to Australia to work there was that uh, I was uh, identified as uh, one of the, I would say, high flyers at the time. And therefore, they sent me to Australia to give me the international exposure. I would say uh, it's slightly different, but the core mining is the same. Okay. Uh, different in terms of culture. So I was able to pick their culture as well. And their culture is quite different. Mm. And if I say different, it's, this is the, the, the way I see it as different. If in their culture, if you see something that is not right from safety point of view, no matter your status, no matter your position, no matter your uh, career, they will point it out to you. to you. So duty of care, if I compare with ours, is quite different. Okay. Because in our case, 
when you see someone mm. from say the royal family mm. uh, doing something that is not right who are you to speak about to go it and say hey and nana you are doing the, the wrong, wrong thing. thing so you cannot do that but okay. that is totally different in Out australia there. there's something that i picked up uh, quite uh, well mm -hmm. and so it helped me shaped me up gave me that international broader exposure so when i came here i've been applying it okay. and that's one of the reasons why i managed uh, to go up the run. Mm. Share with me your highs and low moments um, working with the mine. Uh, I'll start with the high. Uh, if you look at this mine where we are standing, uh, I've got a lot of them, but I'm going to use this one. Okay. Um, in 2012, this mine was on the verge of collapse. Mm. And everybody said, it's game over. Let's pack and go. So I believed in this mine that is a high grade mine and therefore what i did was i put a team together and we did what we call the reinvestment study how can we reinvest into this pit and give it life okay because everyone said polish it pack it and let's uh, sell it oh so when i did that uh, reinvestment study uh, we needed a huge capital and if you look at the capital and you combine that with the OPEX, it's about $1.4 billion. Wow. So I had to put... That's a lot of money. A lot of money. <laughs> so I had to put a, a motivation together to take it to our group, ESCO, and from there to our group board. And uh, in that motivation, I was able to prove that if they give us that money, it's going to really give us extension and going to bring back a lot. Hmm. And Aisha... Uh, we started 2017 and everyone is amazed this mine is doing so well and we are actually excited and i would say that is my high uh, moment. moment yeah on the low moment uh, i will uh, put it down to um, the challenges we had with our um, unions okay, okay? The uh, Ghana Mine Workers Union, uh, we had to uh, come to a head on. Mm. Why? Because they were actually asking us for a lot of increases. Uh, we did a lot for them at the time, but some of the demands were quite uh, uh, unsustainable. Okay. And therefore, I had to take quite a hard, I would say, a very hard one. A tough one uh, which ended up in court ended up in parliament but uh, in the end I think the court and parliament saw the wisdom in what we were trying to do mm. and in the end we won the case out of court but I say it's a challenging moment because of what we went through okay. but I must say that it turned out to be opportunity why mm. because the union have now come to realization that what we were saying at the time was actually a good thing. Mm. It was a, a commercial decision. Okay. Now, when they're dealing with those companies still having the union, they actually moderate their demands. It turns up to that. But one great thing uh, you've done, and a number of people talk about it, is the fact uh, that when you came, you met a number of expatriates, but you realized that you needed to bring the local people on board. So you actually reduced that number and helped many of the local guys to also join the mining field. How that did you achieve that? Very good. When you asked me of my high points, uh, I said I had a lot of them, but I was going to focus on the bigger one. Uh, or the Daman reinvestment. Uh, if, if you look at since uh, 2012, our expatriate number was about 73. As we speak now, we've dropped it down to 11. Interesting. We've dropped it down to 11. Marvelous. And that is uh, something that uh, we are proud of. Because the, the, the operation or the companies are in Ghana. Takwa is in Ghana. Daman is in Ghana. And therefore, we should be able so have to have Ghanaians running it. You know, when we joined the industry, uh, there were certain positions that were reserved for bronies. Mm. 
<laughs> the manning, manning your position. Hey, who are you? As a Ghanaian to go anywhere near it. The general manager position. Hey. Mm. And a few of them. Okay. But if you go to Takwa today, Takwa is a flagship okay. within the Gophos group. The management team is all Ghanaians. The general wow. manager right down to the security manager. 100% Ghanaian. Ghanaian. I have been in this position as a Ghanaian for six years now. Okay. And if you look at the history of this region and you compare that six years with my predecessors, we are higher up there. Oh. And that is something that we are proud of as Ghanaians. We are and proud we of you to, do. to keep up the good work. But illegal mining is one of the challenges many governments have tried to resolve but have failed in all the efforts. What would you say is thwarting our efforts and what would you recommend to solve this canker as a country? Very good. Uh, what I will recommend is what I have done. Uh, government approached us that we should do what we call the community mining. And you know, the community mining, what it all means is that you mine or coexist with the community uh, people. And uh, we've got the licensed small-scale miners and we've got those who are not licensed. So what we have done okay. as a company is that we have ceded a portion of our land mm -hmm. and we've given it to them. Okay. I believe that what we should do as a country is that Minerals Commission should have mechanisms in place to be able to monitor the small-scale side. But now, it's difficult to draw a line between the small-scale licensed and the small-scale unlicensed. unlicensed. So that is what I would do mm. to put in place that mechanism to be able to have that distinction. And if you are not licensed, we don't give you the place to work. We need to also beef up our security. Okay. I think the military were helping us before. Now we've pulled the military and that is also not helping our cause. So as a country, that is something that I will urge government to bring back the military to be able to control these illegal mining activities going on and polluting our water, polluting our environment. One other challenge you always hear from people living in mining communities is the fact that they don't benefit much from mining companies like they're the ones who have the bad roads, they're the ones who have deplorable hospitals, they're the ones who have nothing to write home about schools. How do we change this narrative and what is your role in achieving this? Very good. So what we have done as gold fields, we have what we call the Gold Fields Foundation and this is how the foundation works. Every ounce of gold that we produce, mm. we set aside a dollar. So one ounce, one dollar. So gold foils, we produce 800,000 uh, uh, ounces, so we have so much. And then in addition to that, we set aside 1.5% of our profit before tax. So before we take the profit, before we take the profit to government to tax us, we take one percent, okay. one and a half percent, mm. and then we add it to the one dollar per ounce. Okay. So we use that money to help in electrification of our host community, water and sanitation, agriculture, infrastructure, and a lot of them. Mm. If you look at the road between Takwa and Daman, I'm sure you plied it. Yes. If you look at the road smooth. between Takwa and Daman, first class, mm -hmm. first class. Uh, we spent uh, almost 30 million doing that to to actually uh, resurface that road mm. it's now asphalt finished and it's fantastic one of the other things that we are also looking at doing for the community where we operate is that we try to actually employ people from the host community yeah so if aisha you are from accra and then you come looking for a job and then we have people from within the community also coming side by side, we give local priority to, to the locals. The local, okay. uh, unfortunately, we cannot employ all of them. Yeah. So this is what we are doing. Mm. We are giving them extra skills. Okay. So we bring them to the mine, the youth to the mine, 
and then we give them, you know, we've got trucks, we've got excavators, we've got uh, drill rigs, we've got bulldozers. So we, uh, we give them that skill okay. to make them available. If they don't get a job with Goldfields, at least if Newmont advertises for a job position, they can also get can jobs. So that is something we are doing. We always uh, look at their needs. Mm. And one of them is the uh, TNA park okay. that we are doing. They said to us that, you know, now Medema is a first uh, uh, class uh, club. Book, yeah. And uh, is a host uh, community club as well. Okay. So we are upgrading that stadium. Mm from 400 capacity to 10,000 capacity. Interesting. That what, we are doing. I mean, with your vast experience as a mining engineer, what would you say is the biggest reform needed for the mining industry? Thank you. It's a very good question. When we started this um, profession, even in school, okay, when we started, we had what we call the state gold mine. I'm sure you heard about them. We had four of them. Uh, we had Takwa, Prestia, we had uh, Obuase, yeah. and then uh, the other one is, uh, I think, uh, Dunkwa. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, Dunkwa. So we had the state gold mines. I believe that we need to go back to that. Revive them. We need to go back to that. Because as much as we need to bring in uh, foreign investors in we need to actually try how we as a country can go back to the state gold mining era where we mine the things ourselves it's possible it's a huge capital but the, the return is also amazing when i return from this break i'll be gauging his mood on the controversial ajapa royalties deal and also he loves some gospel or try and do something small for you. But he has a very passionate game, golf. We'll be getting also onto the golf course to play some golf. All of that after this break, stay with me. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. Alfred Bako is still my guest. Um, let me gauge your mood on the Ejapa Royalties deal, the controversial uh, deal that has led to the resignation of the special prosecutor. What's your appreciation of how events have turned out? It's quite unfortunate uh, the way the Ejapa uh, story has panned out or ended. Um, personally, the idea is not a bad one, uh, but how it has been, uh, I would say, uh, planned or the implementation uh, has been uh, where the problem is. We haven't had a lot of consultation. And to me, uh, the basic thing that I always say is you need to consult, uh, you, no matter if you are the father of a, a family or you are the boss of an institution, you need to consult. And we didn't have a lot of uh, consultation, extensive consultation. And that to me is the fundamental uh, reason for the pushback because it came as a blue. It came as a slap on us. Uh, that is number one. Number two, uh, if you work out the deal, I think some of the numbers, um, we missed some of the numbers. Because why do I say that? If I take just the main uh, mining producing companies, about 14 of them, and I do the projections, if I do the projections, the numbers that we are getting from this Ejapa deal, uh, we are going to be shortchanged. That is my view. Okay. Because I've sat down to do the numbers myself, and I've done the projections myself. And I think that uh, uh, the numbers we are hearing, we should get more okay. out of that. Because what we are doing is we are locking our royalties. Yeah. We're actually going for an exchange. Mm -hmm. So if we're going for an exchange, the way I read it in a simple, in a simplistic way mm -hmm. is that you are hedging your business. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you are hedging your business, you weigh the risk and then you weigh the uh, upside as well. But 
I think all these didn't happen. Mm. Uh, on the um, on the resignation, I don't <laughs> think I can say much about that <laughs> uh, because I don't have the details. Oh, but yeah. what I've learned is that the Ejapa deal is one of them. Mm -hmm. So it's quite unfortunate that we have to end it up with uh, our way. Martin Amidu uh, <laughs> this way. Very unfortunate. So you spend all your time in Takwa and Dama. What's your um, favorite moment? Is it with the family? Uh, with the family, uh, it's uh, number one. Okay. But my family is my family, mm. and therefore that is number one. Two boys, one girl. I've got uh, uh, two boys and uh, one girl. So you, you do some no, I'll finish. <laughs> basketballs together sometimes? Yes, we do tennis together. Okay. Because uh, they try to play uh, tennis. Uh, I try bringing them into golf, but uh, my <laughs> daughter doesn't want to come. Okay. So now they are into tennis, seriously. Give her some time. Serious she tennis. would come along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what I do is tennis, you have to play uh, doubles. And therefore, I pair with uh, the, young, the youngest one. And then the two, the first and second, they pair. Mm. And we play quite competitively. I hear they so, attack you a lot. Hey, they attack me a lot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they bet behind me and uh, they don't let me know. <laughs> so that's what I do. And then also, um, golf is uh, something that uh, uh, I have uh, gone into and I've got so much passion uh, for golf as well. Okay. And uh, I do uh, a lot of reading uh, as well. And I listen to uh, music. Uh, mm. It's something that I listen to. Especially okay. the gospel music. Okay. Mm. Is this your favorite? That is the one. That is the one. That is the one. I will see you when you come. such a wonderful <laughs> voice i am so 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 happy that you don't just do mining you're not that so hard person but you make time to also enjoy some music we're proud of you and what you've turned the mining site into keep up the good work the west he loves some golf too we'll be going to the golf course to do something small you know i've been perfecting my golf skills i'll continue today and hopefully I can play some 60 shots yes. <laughs> <laughs> and win some awards. We'll be back shortly. Viewers, you know I've been trying to perfect my golf skills. And today I find myself at the Daman Golf Course with Executive Vice President and Head of Goldfields, Alfred Bako. He's going to help me to perfect my golf skills. Wish me luck. Okay, so um, mm -hmm. you are welcome to the Daman Golf Course. Mm -hmm. uh, this golf course, I would say, is uh, one of the best in the country. I think so, because the Asantehine comes here to exactly, play, right? Exactly. Great. And it's uh, quite a challenging course. Okay. And that is why we bring the pros here actually stretch them. They say it's a, a game for lazy people. It's, it's what they say, but that's it's only a perception. 
<laughs> if you come into it, you will see. It does a lot of things. Okay. You can do business out of golf. Really? On the golf course. Okay. You can actually uh, manage your stress mm -hmm. on the golf course, which I do a lot. Okay. And then also in terms of next workers. Okay. You do a lot of that. Viewers, I'm already on. Please sign me on. I'm on. I'm on already. <laughs> So, uh, so where we are now is uh, what we call the green. Okay. Okay. This is the green, and you've seen that uh, little hole there. Yes. That is what everyone is actually vying for. Targeting. To actually get into that little hole, <laughs> and uh, how do we how do we play it? So you start from the tee box. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are par three. Par three meaning that uh, you pr you have to play three shots. Okay. To actually uh, call it a par. Mm. Okay. And then some of them par four and par five. Okay. So when you start from the tee box, you end on the green. Assuming your ball is here. Mm. Okay. You want to actually play it just uh, in one attempt to get into the hole. Okay. But it's not always that you get it you that get way. You get it right. So what you do here is this is what we call the putter. Okay. Okay. So we come into part. Mm -hmm. And you do practice swing a bit. You go back, you come back. You go back, uh -huh. so watch me as I go for the hole. Okay. So I am doing some practice swing, practice swing, practice swing. And then it's ready to go. So I pick it and then I hit it. Oh, exactly. You nearly so it means it. that because I missed it, so that is my fourth shot. Okay. So I'll go and tap it in five. So let's see if Aisha can sink it for <laughs> one attempt. Oh! So you need to go another one. You have given yourself more work. More work. <laughs> so just, that's it. That's it. I can't so you got it. See? So you just come in and then you tap it in. In? You tap it in and then you tap it in. Oh. And then you play five shots. Okay. Uh -huh, because you had two attempts. Okay. This is the fifth one, right? To oh. tap it in, just tap it in gentle. So then. Gentle. That's, that's it. it. I that's got it. it. That's it. Woo! That's it. <laughs> so, viewers. I'm perfecting my skills and hopefully I'll be able to play 65%. 65 shots. 65 <laughs> shots. <laughs> Which is seven under the course park. Which is seven under the course park. I, I, I'm, I'll be doing more of this. You see, I'm, I'm doing very well. You need to praise me because, I mean... You're doing I, well. I'm doing you're doing well. well. For the first time, Thank you're doing you well. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Alfred Baku, for talking to us. It uh, was really wonderful letting us into your life. I'm grateful for your time. Thank you so much, viewers, for watching. Next week, same time, God willing, we'll be bringing you another interesting personality on PM Personality Profile. My name is Aisha Bryan. Enjoy the rest of our program.